three, two, one. This is part two of atmosphere and weather, the global energy budget. So this is probably one of the most difficult sections of the entire course. Students find this difficult because there's often a lot of new concepts and those new concepts then are all building on top of each other uh, to create an overall picture, right? So just like the last video where I was suggesting that you take your time, you understand step by step, it's really crucial here because if you do lose the first part, you're not gonna understand how it all fits in at the end. So it's all about just compartmentalizing everything into small sections, understanding each of them, and then trying to get the logic of how they work together. The first section, for example, we're gonna go through is the three cell model. So during that, you want to make sure that you're really keenly aware of things going on, because if you don't, you won't understand the next section, which is about ocean currents. So that's really important. So give it a go, take your time, make sure you understand everything and think about it in a different way. If something, if you're not understanding something here, I'm quite limited with the diagrams I can show you or video representation. You can go and maybe find other ones and just see does that make more sense. You know, you can listen to what I'm saying, but look at something maybe a bit different and that could help you a little bit more. So take your time step by step. So we can see here the earth is divided up to many different climate zones, deserts, tropical areas, and we can see a couple of key lines there, the equator, Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Cancer. Inside of those lines, 23 degrees north and south of the equator. So uh, the equator is zero degrees, north of that becomes one degree north and so on. So we get up to 23 degrees, 23.5 degrees north and south. We have the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn, and inside that is the tropics. So we expect weather to change and be particular there. So your lines of latitude don't always explain the climate you're going to get, right? So there can be multiple different climates in the same areas, just like here, between like India and Saudi Arabia, for example. Now, for most of this, we would see that latitudes are important. We're going to start off by explaining the importance of latitudes, and then we'll talk about what are the exceptions to these rules. So why is it that areas in the tropics, for example, get such hot weather, they have deserts, tropical um, rainforests, for example? It's because that they get more solar radiation. So if you imagine these blue lines is the sun's radiation coming in, they are the exact same. So there's the same amount coming in, the same amount at zero degrees, which is the equator, and the same further north, about 60 degrees. Now, the big difference between them is, first of all, uh, when it hits the higher latitudes, it then has to be spread amongst it's a sphere, right? So it's spread over a greater distance on a sphere, okay, in here, as opposed to it coming in very directly in the central area. So you see you're having the same amount of energy and it's dispersed over a greater amount of space, which means it's going to be a lot colder than an area that receives all of the incoming solar radiation in a very concentrated way. So that's why we start to see uh, a lot more heat there. Also, there's going to be other things. For example, if we imagine the atmosphere going around the world like this, it's actually got quite a lot of atmosphere to pass through here, right? As opposed to here where it's quite narrow and it's able to pass through that quite easily. So that means it's going to lose more energy like we talked about in part one of this unit, things like uh, reflective solar radiation and that type of thing. And we also know that areas up in the north then can have ice and snow and that can reflect a lot of the solar radiation too. Now we see in periods as well with seasonal tilt, so the earth's tilted this way, it means that so if the Earth is tilted this way, it means that it is going to be winter in the northern hemisphere and it's going to be summer in the southern hemisphere. And we can see that they're receiving more solar radiation more directly uh, at a more southern point than the equator. And uh, yeah, during this period, actually, there, there's going to be no sunlight at this point, right? So as the Earth is rotating, the sun's not getting to that point. And that's going to cause it to be incredibly cold during certain periods of the year. Because of that, then we do not have an equal distribution of heat, which means that the areas like inside the tropics are going to have a higher average heat, average temperature than areas that are further away, like the polar regions. So they're going to be in the negatives there in terms of their average temperature. And uh, yeah, that's the main reason for it. They're receiving a lot more incoming solar radiation. 
than the polar areas and they have less there to reflect it. So due to that then we see that the areas in the center will have a surplus of heat and the areas in further latitudes away from the equator is going to have a deficit of heat. Now there are ways in which the heat then is transferred and that's what we're looking at the transfer of heat or of heat energy around the world to ensure that you know it's still manageable and we still have conditions at which like plants can grow and it's not um, uncontrollably hot in the center what happens is areas from a surplus are going to transfer energy from areas uh, like the tropics are going to transfer energy north and south and are going to cause those to heat up while energy then and cold air is coming back down and cooling it there are global mechanisms at place to do this and these end up causing our climate zones that we are so used to so when we're looking at the atmospheric circulation and how is this heat energy transferred in the atmosphere we have to understand the three cell model now this diagram might look a bit scary there's a lot of words a lot of vocabulary a lot of squiggly lines around the place so after this lesson you should be able to draw this out yourself from memory and you should understand and be able to explain each of the words that are on this page. So we have to begin simple and we're just going to build this up really slowly, piece by piece. And as I said, we don't I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section. And you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video that just discusses the different parts uh, of the course. So those are the full videos there and should give you all the information oops, should give you all the information that you need throughout the course in order to successfully answer any exam questions. We also have a second course that's just dedicated to the exam paper skills where you'll learn what a good example is, what a bad example is, why different scores are awarded for different reasons, and it should be able to elevate your uh, ability to write these answers. It's also going to give you examples, so you've got like 80 example uh, exam paper questions to look at and to learn from, and to potentially use some of the information in that as you're going forward. So it's also a, a good way to learn too. Okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them.